Welcome back. Again, looking live here at Israel, U.S. sending additional troops to the Middle East as tension rises. This is according to the Pentagon today. At least 270 people killed in Israeli airstrikes in Lebanon today, retaliating to Hezbollah airstrikes um, that had been playing out. Uh, we also know that Israel, just a short time ago, says that it's preparing for the next phases of the Lebanon operation. And it had put out warnings to civilians in Lebanon uh, to evacuate that it was going to go in. It also appears a targeted strike in Lebanon by the IDF may have taken out a top Hezbollah commander in addition to two others uh, that were taken out in southern Lebanon just hours ago. Pleased to bring in right now Professor Emeritus at Harvard Law School, the author of Get Trump and also the book Defending Israel, Alan Dershowitz. Professor, a pleasure to have you. You know how this administration, Harris and Biden, has treated Israel, um, has pandered to voters in Michigan, and now you see the military action playing out, and it seems like the IDF in Israel is going at it alone. Israel is going at it alone and probably will have to be going at it alone uh, for the uh, near near future. It was attacked on October 7th by Hamas and October 8th by Hezbollah. Israel never would have fired a single rocket or shot or killed a single person in Gaza or in Lebanon if they hadn't been attacked. Israel is doing exactly what the United States not only would have done, but has done after 9-11 and other attacks. Uh, uh, you know, imagine if uh, uh, it were invaded by Mexico, Canada, or Cuba. Uh, of course it would defend itself. Of course. In an exquisitely proportional way, it kills very, very few civilians compared to the number of combatants. Take, for example, the attacks on the pagers and radios. Uh, the vast, vast majority of people killed were Hezbollah operatives, many of them high-ranking operatives. A small number of civilians were killed in the process. But under the rules of proportionality, that's to be expected when a country declares war on another country. And then you have comments like this from Leon Panetta, the Democrat former CIA director, talking about the pagers on CBS's morning show. Let's play this, Professor. I don't think there's any question that it's a form of terrorism. DF is a form of is a form of terrorism when the terrorists are the ones that are being targeted. The terrorists who are went in on October of seven that committed atrocities, the worst murders and killings since the Holocaust. How can he speak those words there? I think you're on mute, uh, Professor. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, we have you now. Uh, Panetta, who's a good guy, doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to Israel. Uh, the law is very, very clear that you can attack combatants. These are all combatants. Who gets a communication device? Uh, not only were they direct combatants, one of them, the Iranian ambassador to Lebanon, who is a Hezbollah combatant as well. So Israel has been killing combatants. That's not terrorism. That's legitimate military warfare. And if only Sinwa had a telephone and they were able to get him, the war in Gaza would probably be over. Using communication devices is in aid of a military action, and it's just completely lawful. I know more about international law than Leo Panetta does. I can tell you I've been teaching, writing about this, and litigating about it for a half a century, and it's not even a close question. Going after the communication network of an enemy terrorist organization is completely legitimate. It is not an act of terrorism or an act of a war crime. Not at all. Well, we know it all started with the pagers last week, and now it looks like a lot of success with the IDF taking out some top key Hezbollah uh, leaders. Professor Dershowitz, you've also written a lot about Donald Trump and lawfare. We had uh, the news in our final seconds here that there is a Muslim mayor in the state of Michigan endorsing him, saying he's a man of principles, the right choice for this critical time. You say you've left the Democratic Party as well. Um, that's significant. This is a Muslim city. These are people that Kamala Harris wants to get and may indeed need to get if she wants to win the Electoral College. Look, Muslim people are wonderful. Uh, Islam is a great religion. It's the terrorists. It's the people like Ilan Omer uh, and others who support terrorism that have defeated. So three cheers for a Muslim mayor or other politicians who put America before they put terrorism. So I think it's a good thing. Professor Alan Dershowitz, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. Thank you for your analysis and comments today.